Well, the new federal budget has outlined plans to expand the use of artificial intelligence and boost this country's quantum computing, computing capabilities with the goal of keeping innovators and IP here in Canada. Evan Solomon is the Minister of Artificial Intelligence and Digital Innovation. He joins me live now. Minister, a pleasure to be speaking with you. Thanks so much for making the time. Good morning. Great morning. I, I, okay, so the budget uh, outline or earmarks about a billion dollars towards this. But uh, this year alone, big tech in the U.S. Uh, expects to spend collectively $380 billion on AI efforts. How do you compete with that? Well, first of all, let me just say this budget is a story of building Canada and building the economy of the future. And, and and we've got to invest in Canadians now. That's what we're doing. We've got to be more competitive. And part of the amazing uh, investment in AI and quantum really matters. Let me just tell people, Canada was the first country to have an AI strategy. We've already, we have funds, billions of dollars of funds that we're investing already in compute and in quantum to stay in the lead. This just deepens that investment and expands it. And we're really excited. Look, we've got to build digital infrastructure for the future. But the other element is trust. We've got to make sure people trust this. So that's part of it. But the story of the budget is not just the story of investing in the economy of the future with AI and quantum, but the economy of right now. We are investing in our communities. We are investing in our hospitals. We are investing in building roads. This, I mean, really the story of this budget is a nation of builders. And part of the great story absolutely includes AI. I want to pick up on your note about staying competitive because the budget provides $334 million over the next five years to anchor, it says, quantum technology companies here in Canada. But that is well short uh, of the $2 billion that the Federal Quantum Advisory Council recommended was needed to stop uh, tech firms and their IP from being lured abroad. Uh, so again, how do you compete with that kind of capital? How do you stay competitive, uh, pardon me, when you don't have that kind of capital? Um, so there's lots in here that uh, we're very proud of the investments in quantum. Again, just so folks know, quantum is another frontier technology where Canada plays a leadership role and that we've invested heavily in. We will be launching a big quantum program soon. There's money in this budget and there's money as well. You know, quantum has a dual use function, right? Because there's uh, it very important for um, cybersecurity and there is we are working very closely with defense. One of the stories of this budget is we're building, we're protecting, and we're empowering. And one of the key stories here is the generational investments we're making in national defense. And that is not just building up our military and submarines, uh, not just the, the largest raise to the men and women who serve in uniform, but part of that is making sure we have billions of dollars in, in national defense. And that will include quantum. So this is what we call dual use. It has real civilian benefit and it has real benefits for national defense. And you're going to see that in our quantum program. This this is really part of this kind of generational investment in making sure that we secure Canada's future on the digital side, on the national defense side. Just to ask you again about those investments in quantum, uh, like, do you worry Canadian competitors, though, could shift their operations to the U.S.? Because quantum leaders, they, they're worried that unless Canada, you know, matches that U.S. quantum computing funding, which has offered three Canadian companies up to 360 million U.S. each, uh, that, again, they could shift their, 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 uh, their operations uh, south of the border and that IP can be lured abroad. Yeah, it's, it, look, I, I, let me just give you one example. Here in Toronto, um, Xanadu just is going public uh, with a valuation of over $3 billion. We know Xanadu. We work with them. The government has been part of funding for Xanadu. Uh, they are keeping their IP here in Canada. They are keeping their headquarters here in Canada. Well, they're growing, and they're doing that because we work very closely with them. Um, and we also will be launching a program that is very competitive with any program in the world with the explicit goal to keep Canadian companies here so they build here, they invest here, and they create good jobs here. And, and again, this is the budget day, so there's lots of money, but we also have money set aside for that as well, and I'll be announcing a quantum program. But the key word here, and I think you're right to point it out, 
is to keep the jobs in Canada, to invest in Canada, to make sure that we believe in Canadians, Canadian creativity, Canadian IP, Canadian innovation. That's exactly what this budget's doing. And, and I think when you see those programs roll out, you'll realize why companies like Xanadu are staying, which is one of the global leading companies in quantum, are staying right here. I don't have a lot of time left, but I do want to ask you, in a budget that's pitching the kind of, you know, transformative change that's not going to happen overnight, that arguably, you know, doesn't help Canadians tomorrow at the grocery store, like, this is a time of anxiety for young Canadians already facing one of the worst uh, unemployment rates uh, in decades, and now they're worried that those entry-level jobs that they've been fighting for are going to be automated. So what kind of reassurances can you offer them? Well... Let me just, first of all, just talk about something in the budget that's important because you're raising a great question. You know, how do we ensure that our communities uh, are built strong? How do we ensure that Canadians have jobs and young people have jobs? A couple of things. There's a program here that's going to create 100,000 summer jobs for young people. That's absolutely key. Two, we have a massive Build Community Strong Fund. This is a $50 billion fund. In that fund, if you're a community right now, you are going to see that there's more than $5 billion to fix and build hospitals. So community centers, hospitals, roads. Your community is going to see this right now. Real action. And then to make sure that the jobs of the future are here, we're investing in skills, we're investing in jobs, and that's really important. But the, the thing about this budget, the story of this budget, is it's a story of, it's a nation of builders, right? we got to move. It's a tough environment. People know it. We've got to invest in Canada. So we move from reliance to resilience. And that means we've got to support families. And that's why families got a tax cut for 22 million Canadians. That's absolutely important. That's why families now are going to see investment in their community. That's why you're going to see entrepreneurs and businesses who have access to capital so they can invest, especially in the tech sector. That's why you're going to see universities who have supported the budget say, my God, you're going to bring in a thousand of the greatest researchers and minds with this talent attraction strategy to make sure the talent stays here in Canada. That's why universities are supporting that. And that's why we got to invest and in big builder, you know, build bigger and bolder across the country. We got to invest in Canada. And in a moment where there's this geopolitical realignment, we got to invest in individuals, families, communities and the country. And we got to invest in ourselves. And that's exactly what this budget does. I, I, we've been getting fantastic um, support from this budget, uh, as you've seen. And I, and I hope Canadians read it really closely. There's a lot there for families. Just one last thing I want to say, just making things like the National Food Program permanent that will feed hundreds of thousands of kids, that's something that's going to affect kids today when they're at school. Uh, okay. That's, those are real things. Those are things that are tangible things affecting Canadians absolutely today. But we got to make sure we future-proof the economy for tomorrow. That's why we're investing in education. That's why we're investing in new technologies. And that's why we're investing in Canadians. Okay, Minister, I have to leave it there. I'm unfortunately out of time. Thanks so much for making the time this morning. Appreciate it. Minister Solomon. Awesome. Thanks so much.